Welcome, star kids and friends. Today's passage is Acts 21, 17 through 36. In the previous passage, as Paul was traveling, the Holy Spirit used people to warn him that he was in great danger by going back to Jerusalem. And Paul was committed to obeying God's will, no matter what may happen. In today's passage, Paul arrives back in Jerusalem. His third missionary journey is complete, and the trouble that he was warned about is waiting for him. Before we turn to God's word and read today's passage, let's pray to God now. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you again, and we are thankful for these dear children. And we pray that as we read of Paul's journeying and his relentless focus to stay on mission, no matter what the cost, that we pray that our lives look in a small way like his, that we are not counting the costs here, but that our eyes and our hearts and our minds are focused on you. And we pray for these children, God, that their lives have deep purpose, that they are committed to you and following you all of their days. Help us all to run the race you set before us and to learn from the Apostle Paul even this morning what it looks like to stay on mission, to finish well, and complete the race because he loves you, and we do too. In your name we pray, amen. So we'll be reading from Acts 21, verses 17 through 36. And this is when Paul is arriving at Jerusalem. When he arrived in Jerusalem, the brothers and sisters received us warmly. The next day, Paul and the rest of us went to see James, and all the elders were present. Paul greeted them and reported in detail what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. When they heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, you see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed and all of them are zealous for the law? They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them, not to circumcise their children or to live according to their customs. What shall we do? Then they will certainly hear that you have come. So what do you tell? The, the, these are four men that have made a vow. Take these men, join in purification rites, and pay their expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know that there is no truth to these reports about you but that you yourselves are living in obedience to the law. And as for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain from the food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. The next day, Paul took the men and purified himself along with them. Then he went to the temple to give notice of the date when the purification would end and the offering would be made for each of them. When the seven days were nearly over, some of the Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul at the temple, and they stirred up the whole crowd and seized him, shouting, Fellow Israelites, help us! This is the man who teaches everyone, everywhere, against our people and our law in this place. And besides, he has brought Greeks into the temple and defiled this holy place. They had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesian in the city with Paul, and assumed that Paul had brought him into the temple. The whole city was aroused, and the people came running from all directions. Seizing Paul, they dragged him from the temple, and immediately the gates were shut. And while they were trying to kill him, news reached the commander of the Roman troops that the whole city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. He at once took some officers and soldiers and ran down to the crowd. When the rioters saw the commander and his soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. The commander came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. Then he asked who he was and what he had done. Some of the crowd shouted one thing and some another, and since the commander could not get at the truth because of the uproar, he ordered that Paul be taken into the barracks. When Paul reached the steps, the violence of the mob was so great that he had to be carried by the soldiers. The crowd that followed kept shouting, get rid of him. So children, 
What is God saying to you today about this passage? Think about it. Read it over. Again, if you'd like, and write down in your soap journal what God is teaching you. And don't forget to share it with someone else. God bless you.